<laughs> so, uh, yeah. Yeah, is one way to put it. Hey, Allie. I think I'll just show myself out. Okay, uh, call me later? You know I will. Sorry for interrupting. No, it's totally fine. We were done anyway. Catch anything? Mostly ice, but yeah. Tyler, I'm sorry for freaking out yesterday. All of this, it's just been really hard on me. Don't apologize. I was being an asshole. We should have never pushed you that hard. Come here. God, why did I miss you so much? It's only been a day. I've been told I have that effect on people. You dumb dumb. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I need to show you something. What? You're kind of weirding me out. Can we sit down for a sec? So, what is it? I was just at Sam's. He's not our father. How do you know? I asked him, point blank. I'm not surprised. Burning down the barn didn't really seem like a Sam move. Yeah, I guess it was silly to suspect him in the first place. He'd never hurt Mary Ann's kids. There's something else. Look at this. This was taken in 1992 when Marianne mm -hmm. first moved to Delos Crossing. See that ladder? Sam told me the barn has a loft. He helped her build it. Apparently she never told anyone about it. And it's still there? As far as well, he knows, yeah. yeah. What do you think? Should we give it a shot? We've come this far. You have a to. hidden loft? That's got secret shit written all over it. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Oh, ladder's still there. Just need to crack it open. Ugh, what a mess. That's not gonna help us I get this house sold. Yeah, we got our deadbeat dad to thank for that. So, obviously the ladder's gone, but what about that handle? Is it still here somewhere? The ladder! Look, Alison. There is a ladder right here. <laughs> and how did I not... How did I not notice that? I mean, yeah. What do you think is up there? I don't know. I'm trying not to speculate. My but... brain was going to some real dark places. Don't worry. Whatever's up there, I'll protect you. We'll see how chivalrous you feel when you've got bats in that perfectly coiffed hair. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, but surely they must have looked up at some point. And seen like a little, little, little latch up there. Maybe not. Well, obviously not. Okay. Let's go in here. Ooh, hello. Ah, the moon hack. Okay, what am I here for? I mean, there's a ladder here. Uh huh. I thought I saw something red over here, but I guess my mind's just playing tricks on me. No lever. Oh, lever. This place is a mess. If there was ever a time to find a magic portal. That's what I'm looking for. 
For a second, I thought there might be another secret stash down here, but just a loose plank. Nothing here. Okay. The handle should be behind this. Um. Ah, there it is. Hmm. It's opening up. The secret keeper always did store all the best secrets in the clouds. Yep. Come on, let's find a way to climb up there. Well, we've got two ladders to choose from. We'll take this one. Whoa. And you never notice the windows? Can you see anything? Nope, nada. Here, found a switch. Shaved a few years off my life. Whoa. She really went all out, did she? It's her story. Look. She left us something. Mm. It's got a combination lock with letters. Okay. Do you think she hid the code somewhere in all this? Knowing Mary Ann, probably. Yep. Well, you want to do this? Yeah. Let's start here. Okay. Okay, I start this. Recognize this? Yeah. It's from the story where the goblins tricked the Mad Hunter. It looks like it, but it's different, right? Can you check the book? Uh-huh. Once upon a time, there was a young princess who felt hopeless. Okay, now the Mad Hunter gets his hand back. Um Is that the right one? Trick the Mad Hunter. Thirty nine. Which is the last one. Uh Well, here it is. Why do you think she changed the picture? I don't know. Maybe it's a message. Like, the differences between the two mean something. Hmm. Something about Marianne, right? Since she's the princess? Yeah. Why don't we try to find them all and then see if it makes any sense? Okay. 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 Spot the differences. It moves. Oh. Some of these parts are buttons. Ooh. Huh. Is there an extra star here? Or am I just imagining that? Okay. I don't know if I'm doing this right. Why do you think she added that castle in the background? See the color of the flag? It could be the gold lady's castle. And it looks like the princess is running away from it. So, Marianne ran away from home, and she grew up kind of rich? Huh, a pink flower. Was that in the original picture? Oh, so we're actually doing spot difference. Okay, got you. 
Um, let's have a look. Okay, so we have, what do we have? Okay, there's no castle. Um, there's two flowers on the left, one on the right. Uh, the princess is running away behind a tree. Um, Is that tree in there? That tree is not in there, so what we got? And that star. Two stars and then three stars. Yeah, that star's always been there. So deselect. It's just a random star. No special meaning. Uh deselect that. Uh really fresh with the straws here. Never mind. So the princess is running away from the mad hunter. Who was sent by the gold lady, according to the story. Do you think the gold lady could have been Marianne's mom? I mean, she always used to say she moved to the end of the world to get away from her family. Huh. Yeah, you're right. She ran away. Just like the princess is here. Okay. Um, what about that tree branch? Yeah, that's there. So we'll deselect that. Even if the branch is a little different, I don't really think that means anything. Mm. How many twigs? One, two, three, four, five, six. Four, five, six, yeah. Um, we'll keep that there. Hmm. The Mad Hunter still has two hands here. So this was either before the Gold Lady cut off his oh, other- That's it. We did it. Whoa. What's in there? Okay. Okay, so we've got to know. Pictures, letters. Have you ever seen any of these? All the pictures of Marianne I've ever seen were the ones hanging on the walls. Well, she's got some medals. I can't believe she was a ballet dancer. Uh -huh. Marianne. And a good one, too. God, that's so not her. Yeah, good for her. Aw, poor thing. Why would she keep an old drawing of a pet in here? Hmm. My birdie Polly. I miss you forever. Oh, that must have been her first uh, the gold lady. pet. That was definitely her mom. So, did Marianne grow up kinda rich? Maybe. Would have been nice to have some of that. Hmm. Wow, I don't think I've ever seen a picture of her that young. I think that's her mom, mom in the background. Mom in the background, yeah. She doesn't look happy. Did you know she studied engineering? No. It, it looks like she changed her major to visual arts. I don't think she actually got it changed. The paper's not signed and no. it's all wrinkled. Like someone tried to throw it away. Hmm. Okay. An artsy environmentalist. Yep. That sounds like Marianne's exact kind of catnip. And that could... An artsy environmentalist. Yes. Okay. Yep, that sounds like Marianne's exact yep. kind of catnip. And that could be the dad, maybe. Who knows? Marianne, I can't do this anymore. You deserve better than cliche bullshit. Like, it's not you, it's me. But the truth is, it's all just been too much to deal with and I have realized I'm just not ready. Maybe if we could have dealt with all of our, all of this on our own, with your mum constantly putting pressure on us, things could have been different. But the damage is done, and it's probably too late for that now. I'm so sorry. You're an amazing person, and you made me a better man. I hate myself for doing this, but I feel like we'll both be better off apart. There I go with the cliches again. Please don't ever stop being who you are. Here, but I'm gone. Brent. Could so this who's... guy have been any more cryptic? Yeah, so who's Brent? Tyler, see that little light? No. Nope. I think we need to solve this one next. Which one's that? Oh, okay. There's the gold lady again. She's all over the board. There was a figure of her in that stash by the Mad Hunter painting, right? 
Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So maybe all of this is related to what we found in there. Mm hmm. Okay. Her cruel parents kept her locked away in their musty palace. Okay. What have we got? We got a dog, we got a cat, we got a dove, and a horse. Okay, so uh, I'm not sure on the top one. Oh, bird. That one, obviously. Hey, I can move the piece next to the gold lady. All these pictures. Okay, so, so that's like the bird. They images from Marianne's life before Delos, don't they? Well, some of them do anyway. Maybe that's it then. We need to figure out which ones are real. Uh, okay. Um, so we saw a ballerina, so I'll put that. The princess dancing, playing violin, spinning wool. I guess this is stuff she did for fun. Notice how unhappy she looks in all these pictures. Mm -hmm. I don't think she was having any fun. Nope. What else we got? We got Wayne skills. A uh, bag of money, I think. Engineering. The wise princess looks like she's trying to run away. And she's being watched by the gold lady. Hmm. Okay, we've got a knight, we got a blacksmith, uh, an artist, and just a just a random guy, by the looks of him. So, artist. Hmm. What's the gold lady do? Is that it? It's opening. Okay. Guess that's What's an in there L this time. That's the house. Is that Carol? Yeah, and Sam. Look at him. He's so young hmm. and happy. Wow. She worked for a watchmaker in Juno before she moved to Delos. No wonder she was so handy. Uh, here is my Delos Crossing pal's number. I let him know you are interested in the house he's selling. Tammy. Oh, so that's how she found the house. Okay. What we got? What's this? Salmonberry Park. Huh. Is that some kind of commune? Looks like it. It's so weird to imagine her living in a community like that. With, you know, other people. Hmm. The weirdest part is how they all seem to love her. Where was prom queen Marianne when the whole town was turning on us? From the good people of Salmonberry Park. Kodiak Island. June 1992. Don't be a stranger. Keep on looking for those answers to the questions in your head to which you're blind. Smiley face, Shelley. We miss you already, Sol and Bronwyn. Sorry we're losing you to modern civilization. We'll miss your positive attitude and your adventurous spirit. Also, your wild edibles picking skills. <laughs> Pretty Marcus. Bon voyage, Marianne, Rick. Marianne, you had the warmest, most beautiful aura, and I know you'll keep on shining wherever you land. Peace and blessings. Jarita, thanks for being our little ray of sunshine. Godspeed, Cabo, and Wati. I like your pictures. Love, Kamala. Okay, so she was a part of a community where she used to live and then obviously she moved here All right this is a big one her father her father Marianne I hope this letter finds you but since you didn't leave any contact information I will have to send it to your aunt and hope for the best I am writing to inform you that your mother passed away last week we just had her funeral reception. The house has been filled with people all day. Friends, family, colleagues and church members. It's now 11pm and I'm sitting alone at the kitchen table. 
surrounded by dozens of trays of food, flowers and sympathy cards. Your cousin Aidy brought in a beautiful photo album full of, full, full of our holiday pictures in La, in La Conna. You're there in all of them, but you weren't here today. We haven't heard from you in four years and can only hope you made it to Alaska or wherever, wherever you are and that you and your child are both safe. Your mother had been sick and depressed for years, and you can imagine why. The pain of being shunned by her own daughter, knowing she would never get to see her grandchild grow up. It spread through her body like cancer and consumed her completely. All, of, all this suffering simply because you ran away like a temperamental little girl, instead of accepting her help when you got pregnant, aunt of wedlock, after dropping out of college and without a penny to your name. Okay. She only stepped up to help because she knew you weren't ready to raise a child properly. Marianne. Her mother's duty doesn't end when her child, when her children leave home. Know that you're a mother yourself. I hope you will begin to understand that good parenting isn't about Coddle, coddling children. It's about prov providing for them and shaping them into the people they're supposed to become, whether they like it or not. I won't trouble you again. We've made your intentions clear. I just thought you should know. Dad. What the hell? Marianne was pregnant in 1992, before she even got here. Before us? Oh. Do we have a long lost sibling out there somewhere? It's possible, but she could have given it up or miscarried. Who knows? Yeah. yeah, you're right. Do you think we could track down her father? You mean the grandfather she never told us about? I don't think I want to. You're not at all excited about having more family. You saw the letter. I don't think we want any part of that. Fine. Let's keep digging. Mm. Okay, so we've got an O and an L. Uh, what else we got? What's this one? Why are these pictures from the Book of Goblins here? I don't know. Okay, that's not one to do. Tyler. We're not done with this one. Okay, it's just the big ones. What's this? Hmm. Some sort of map? One day she took her tiara and ran away to the forest. Okay. Some kind of map. Um. What's that plant thing on top? Oh, those are definitely salmonberry flowers. Hey. That degree in outdoor studies is paying off. Okay, some berry flowers. Hmm. Would that go down where the clock is? Some sort of clock? I was thinking they would switch, but obviously not. Um, okay. Okay, so it's definitely... Okay, she ended up at the forest. So, she went to the That's castle. the old lady's castle. Castle, and then that house. This is the princess's house. Salmonberry. What's that plant thing on top? Oh, those are definitely salmonberry flowers. Hey, that degree in outdoor studies is paying off. Okay, and then... Some sort of the clock. clock. And then... This looks like a dinner room. It seems like it's not doing anything. Okay, that's Maybe wrong. Maybe it's broken. Okay, that's not right. Okay. Uh, maybe she went to... Okay, so... Hmm. 
the castle either goes the castle goes to the clock and it goes to the center salmonberry goes to the castle the center the clock and the house so i haven't got a bleeding clue so surely the castle's first because she ran away from the, the castle. Old lady's castle. She ran away from the castle. Some sort of clock. Then it was that. What's that plant thing on top? Oh, those are definitely salmonberry flowers. Hey, that degree in outdoor studies is paying off. Then this it's the, the house. house. And then it's the forest. This looks like a dinner limit. Why is nothing happening? Okay. Um. Take away the house. Uh, do that. This looks like a dinner party with the old bear and the very old beaver. And then the house. This is the princess's. Come on. No. You need help? Yes, please. Yeah, I'm stuck. Any ideas? Castle, the clock, the dinner party. I'm trying to make sense of the castle in the bottom left corner. Well, it's like we were saying. The gold lady lived in one, so it probably represents Marianne's childhood home. Okay, yeah, so that's the first thing. Uh, what else? That's our house in the top right corner, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Hold on. When did she buy the house again? Why don't we go back and check the dates? Uh, don't worry. The house is back in 1992. Okay, one last you need time. help? Yeah, I'm stuck. Any ideas? I... Uh, clock. Mm, a clock. What do you think this is about? She had that watchmaking job in Juno, right? Yeah. So that was probably right before she moved to Delos. Okay. Right before. Everything is like before. Oh, that actually goes to there. What's that plant thing on top? Oh, those are definitely salmonberry flowers. Hey, that degree in outdoor studies is paying right. off. And then the clock. Some sort of clock. Then the house. This is the princess's house. Then the tea this party. Looks like a dinner party with the old bear and the very old. There bear. we go. Yes. He. What's in there? Another letter. The princess's laws. Is this from the book of goblins? Not that I know of. Well, sure looks like it could be. Hmm. Sequel. Uh, the princess is lost. Once upon a time, in an ancient and deep forest, there lived a wise princess in a big wooden house. She had made it through the woods and to that house with nothing left but the clothes on her back and a single item from her old life. A splendid tiara. She lost everything almost everything, in her desperate flight from the mad hunter. The trees tore the rucksack from her back and shredded her dress and left a pattern of red welts on her skin. But though it all, but for it all, she clutched the tiara close to her chest, fearing any, mi any misstep could cause it to fall from her arms and break. The tiara had its own spot in the big wooden house, a pillow near the window, where sun would catch on its surface to shine and wink. The princess could stare for hours at the tiara, marvelling in its beauty and running her thumb down its curves. Every morning she would awake she would, <laughs> and she would tend to it, polishing it every sur <laughs> polishing its every surface to be sure it shone as brightly as it possibly could. Then she would pluck it up, place it upon her head, and walk the woods, being somehow more complete. Because what, after all, she was a princess. Oh. Oh, okay. Because what, after all, was a princess without a crown? Every night, she would place it upon its pillow, give it a quick kiss, and go to bed. On her way, she would pause and glance back to be sure it was still there. She hated to be separated from it. 
but she knew it was safest on the pillow while she slept. How much is there? One night, the princess woke to a raging storm. The wind howled against the walls, rattling the windows in their panes. Fearing a gust might burst open a window and blow the tiara to the ground, she plucked it from its pillow and brought it to bed with her. All through the night, she held the t tiara close, and in the morning, she woke to find herself still cradling it. The storm had passed, and the princess relaxed. That day was the same as any other, though she perhaps gave the tiara an even more thorough cleaning, grateful as she was that nothing had gone wrong. That night, she placed the tiara upon its pillow, gave it a quick kiss, and went to bed pausing on her way to be sure it was still there. In the morning, she, she woke and sensed immediately that something was wrong. In the living room, Bityara lay upon the ground, broken, dull and faded. Nothing else in the room had changed. The pillow was ex exactly where she had left it. The window was closed. There had been no storm, no wind, no sign that any, anything at all could have gone amiss. Only the broken tiara, mute upon the ground. She picked it up and held it in her arms with a guttural cry, but though she tried to fix and to polish it, it was gone beyond repair and was no shine with no shine left. The princess held her tiara the day through the day and through the next night sitting in the same spot at the window where she used to polish it. When the sun rose, she looked outside and her gaze fixed on a sapling. She remembered how this sapling had survived the winter, clinging to, the li clinging to life despite the frozen, unforgiving earth. Without a word, she went out and buried her tiara in the ground beneath the sapling, and as the final scoop of dirt fell, the tiara felt truly gone, and with it, the final link to her old self. She was no longer truly a princess in a tiara and a beautiful gown, but a one woman, alone in a deep and ancient wood. And that was how the princess lost her most precious treasure and her title. We heard that. That was how the princess lost her most precious treasure. Mm hmm and her title. That was her own story. That was the story she read us that night. God, it makes sense now. Yeah, she got pregnant. And she ran away to start a new life. And then she made her way to Delos Crossing, where she was finally happy. But then the baby died. I can't even imagine how she must have felt. She left everything behind, built a whole new life for him. And then, he was just gone. I guess having us helps her move on. But when it looked like we were going to be taken away, she snapped. Mm. She just couldn't lose any more children. No. It really wasn't anything we did. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with all this. I don't either, but... All I wanted was to understand what happened to her. And now I do. Yeah. But we still haven't seen what's in that chest. Ooh, it could be anything. Okay, so how do we open it? Well, you've got three letters. But I want to see what these are. Gold lady stays locked up in her castle. 
Ah, this one. All oh. the mangy muskrat have his rock back. I didn't get all of them. The ice king goes in the forest, obviously. I missed the bear. Back in your pond, big frog. There you go, stalwart moose. Oh, I missed the bear and the one. I didn't know how to open that one in um, Eddie's room. I'm sure there would have been another one in there. So I missed Max three. Present in her lake. That's not bad. The mad hunter, always on the princess's trail. The wise princess goes in the big wooden house, mm. of course. Crafty goblins go here. Hey. That's the pious pelican spot. There we go. I'm happy now. The princess lost her most precious treasure. Oh, geez. That's why it all happened. I still can't wrap my head around it. Okay, so what have we got? I think that's an L, O, and an E. All right, should be easy enough. <laughs> Okay, so that's an L. O. And E. Okay, I'm guessing that's not right. No. All right, should be easy enough. Okay, so let's make this one an E. And make this one an O. Leo. Could that be his name? Yes. Whoa. Did it just get darker in here? Dear Allison and Ollie, your son? we write stories to understand and be understood. But what good is a story without a first act? I'm sorry, I kept mine from you for so long. All my love, Goblins. Why does she have a photo of that tree locked in here? Hey, there he is. Is that... Leo Ronan. Oh. Why didn't she tell us about him? Why didn't she tell us any of this? I mean, it's fucking terrible. That's why. Allie, did we do the right thing opening this? We did. It's better we know what happened, even... Even if it's hard. I understand everything. There's one more thing we need to see. Are you sure? Yes. What was under... Come on. Let's go to the dock. Ah, I see. It's time to finish this. But there was something under... Those... A baby blanket? Hey, now that we're done with the important stuff, maybe we can take a crack at these? Okay. Um. Ah. The very old beaver's repair list. That's the story where the princess's house gets damaged by a storm and the animals help her fix it. Okay. Yeah. What did they do to fix it again? Okay, let's have a look. Uh, ba -ba -bum 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 -bum. What do we got? What do we got? Where is it? Beaver fixes the house. Oh, no one. Ding, 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 ding. The singles. The first two, first two things she could fix. Okay, nailing planks back into place. Uh, do, 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 do. If you want help with the roof, you may. Repair. Da, da, da. Else, I nodded. I'll be. It'll be an easy fix, she said, and she set 
about writing so writing the posts with loud slaps slaps of her tail she fixed the planks that were blown off the walls and uh, she slapped the post with her tail to write it and uh, uh, she fixed all right oh another letter damn that must have been rough on eddie yeah he um he doesn't really like to talk about her dear marianne you cover your ears every time i try to have a have this conversation with you so i thought i would be I would have a better chance doing this in a letter. I know you don't like saying goodbye, so I'll keep my melan 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 rambling short and sweet. I went to thank you with all my heart for taking care of me for, for these past few months. I can't even imagine how exhausting it must be must have been for you to look after a sick old lady when you also have two small children at home. I know you want me to keep fighting this disease and hoping hoping for recovery. It's always been a great strength of mine to know when it's time to let go. And that time has come. I'd like to ask you for one last favour. Please take care of Eddie after I'm gone. My poor boy puts on a brave front ever since his father died. But I know he's in pain. I would be so much more at peace knowing he still f he still has family. Maybe he could teach the kids how to fish. He loves spending time with them. Thank you for the warmth and the peace you brought to my life. Give the give the kids a kiss for me, will you, Carol? Uh, the crafty goblins' good deeds. Of course. The goblins had to help out the creatures of the forest to pay off their debt to the pelican. Uh, well, what did they do? Yeah. No, I don't really remember. Okay, let's find out. And uh, did, 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 did good deeds. This is some two thieves. Uh, no, 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 no. Pelican forgives the cop. Ah, uh, this one. Do this one. It looks like that one. Okay. What's about time to do? They watched as the pelican ate one clam and then took a nap. Do you think she would mind if we just take? If we took it just a little. Ask Goblin once another. Her beak never empties. She wouldn't possibly miss a couple of crabs. Said the second, licking her lips. They were agreed, and so they crept over, f flitched some crabs, filled, I don't know what that word is, and ran. The goblins scarfed the crabs, but when they finished, they found that they were still hungry. She won't miss a handful of shrimp, said one goblin to another. The goblins scarfed the shrimp, but when they finished, they found that they were still hungry. Maybe a few scallops, said one goblin to the other. Uh, to do do back for clams, then urchins, and finally a sea cucumber. Finally, they were not hungry, but there was also nothing left. The pelican woke up. What happened to my food? she asked. Unable to lie about it, the goblins confessed a crime. The pelican was dismayed, but she was a charitable hearted bird. And she could tell the crafty goblins were growing little creatures. I will share my food with you, but you must in return follow my example and be as generous with others as I am with you. Take that to heart and I will be will have considered your debt paid. But we have nothing to give, said the goblins. We have your nimble hands and your crafty brains and loving hearts, said the pelican. Crafty goblins realized how much they had to give, and for the rest of the day, they looked for ways to help other creatures of the forest. Okay, so they start with the moose. And did you do next the old bear? So moose bear. And finally, they found a princess. So uh, moose bear princess. 
When they were done, they returned to the pelican. Okay, so moose, moose, bear, princess. Okay, uh, moose. They gave the stalwart moose a good scratch on the back. And a bear. They broke open the beehive for the bear. And the princess. They hugged the princess when she was crying. Nailed it. Our lives would have been so different if their friendship hadn't gone to shit. Getting better at this. <laughs> uh, the pelican crossing is a specialty gift boutique located near the O'Shea Glacier, catering to Castineau Channel tourists as well as Dallas Crossing locals. We specialize in an assortment of high quality products from home accessories, handmade souvenirs to personalized apparel and locally made art. I can't read. The Pelican Crossing will be the first store to act as a relay between the buzzing arts and craft scene and customers. In addition to a wide array of novelty handcrafted products, the consumer will enjoy friendly and knowledgeable customer service from Vecchi store owner, co-owner, Tessa Vecchi, and up-and-coming artist, Marianne Ronan. This business plan is prepared to obtain finance, financing in the amount of $20,000 purchase inventory and to help cover expenses in the first year of operations. In year one, the Pelican Crossing plans to break even and in year two, we plan to generate a moderate profit. Working on the executive summary, part of our business plan would do you think? What do you think, Tessa? The old bear's gifts for the princess. I'm totally blanking on that story. What did he give her again? Why don't we open up the book and check? Okay. Uh, bear to princess index. Bear and a princess. Okay. Uh, d d d d d d. Is uh, I've read this one before. After taking uh, gifts from the bear, he caught fresh salmon and ripe berries. One spring, the so gifts. This is gifts, right? So salmon. Berries, bluebell. Um, ba -ba -bum 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 -bum. Okay. So, salmon. Uh, fresh caught salmon. Uh huh. Some roses, maybe. A newly bloomed bluebell. Okay, bluebell. Yes. Roses, no. Wait. Hazelnuts. No, not hazelnuts. Or not. Berries. Of ripe berries. There we go. Nice. Man, he had it bad. Just couldn't let go. Sorry. For the note. Sorry for the note under the door like a prison inmate. You okay? I stopped by and rang a couple times this week, but you didn't answer. I could see the light in the, in the hayloft, so I figured you were in but didn't want to talk. I hope I didn't ruin everything. I know I probably came on kind of strong, but this, but the thing is, I don't know how to talk to a woman like you. You are strong and kind, and you know so much, it's hard for me to know how to keep up. I guess all that went to my head but I want you to know I got the message and I'm gonna get out of your hair now and there doesn't need to be any bad feelings we can pass in the street and say hello or not it's okay p.s. I noticed your car was leaking so I put some sealant in there you might need to take it to the shop though let me know if you want me to come with you because sometimes these guys try to rip you off if not, no big deal. So. Okay. The crafty goblin's loot. That's from the princess and the two thieves. I drew the original. And I distinctly remember drawing that cake. 
which is arguably the best part of that illustration. All right, Picasso. And you probably remember what the goblins stole in that story, huh? Nope. Uh, yeah, didn't think so. All right. And do, 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 do that one. Left alone in the big house and deep forest. She knew that the forest would provide her. I wanted when the blanket. The princess realized that food was disappearing from her house. It was not much at first, only a few fruits, nuts, and eggs vanishing during the night. Okay, so fruits, nuts, and eggs. Maybe it's the birds. Or mice. But then small items started disappearing as well. Spoons and plates. Forks, knives, and blankets. It was if, as if every time she was in one part of the house, something disappeared in another room. And she searched food kept on disappearing. Night after night. I will make a cake, and a princess. A big cake with every egg and fruit and nut I still have. So that I only have one thing to keep an eye on. She spent the whole day making the cake and using everything she had left. Did they cake the cake? The cake she made was so big they could hardly she could hardly carry it. If I manage to protect the cake, I'll be able to survive the long winter, she said. So she she added a lock to the oven and she kept the big cake safe inside. But the next morning, the lock had been opened and the cake had disappeared. At first, the princess cried because the cake was the last f of her food until the snow melted. And then she noticed two trails of tiny feet in a spilled flour. And she followed the tracks to a hidden hatch in the floorboards. Okay, what have we got? We got spoons. What if they took some spoons? They did take some spoons. Uh, they took some eggs. I'm pretty sure they stole some eggs. And... Some flour for the cake, maybe? Nope, put that back. Or not. What's that? Did they steal candy? No, they didn't. Or not. Maybe they took some of the princess's fruit? That's Apparently. it. I always wondered where that drawing went. She said it was her favorite, and then one day it just disappeared. <laughs> you are the best mum in the world. The prettiest princess. Uh, yeah, split an image. Look at that. Okay. That is everything up here. You really want to go? You sure we've seen everything? I mean, I'm pretty sure we've been... We stacked these things, we've found pretty much everything, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Either way, I'm ready for this to be over. Me too. Okay, we're going to the dock. Hey, yeah, slow down. What are we waiting for? I want to know who was here that night. Let's try and remember who Marianne was arguing with. Okay, let's go. Come on, let's do this. Okay, good for you. Gamma. <sighs> oh, come. Come on, come on, a little more. Come on. It's right there. It's not Tom. Tom? Tom Vecchi is our father? Of course. It had to be him. Really? Tessa knew, didn't she? Yeah, she, she must have. That's what she didn't want to tell us. God, Marianne and Tom? I know. Ugh. What should we do now? Yeah, call him out here and make him tell us what was going on. And if he won't? We know his secret. He will. 
Tom? It's Allison. We need to talk. We know it was you. What the hell? I never thought it was Tom. I thought it was going to be someone, to someone totally random. I guess, like, he seemed like a good guy. And he just faded into the background, so I wouldn't notice. Let me take the lead on this. I know him better. Yeah. I thought I did, anyway. Sure. Yeah. Whatever. As long as we get answers. She's been with him. She's been working at that place for so long. And she didn't even know it. She didn't know any of it. Kids, listen. You're our father. <sighs> yes. You knew how bad it got out here. How little we had. Why didn't you help Marianne? You mean all the money she wanted. We didn't have anything to spare. Well, that winter was rough on everyone. And you would have starved out here if not for all the free food we gave you. Don't act like you had anything to do with that. That was all Tessa. That's a cruel presumption, young man. Maybe it was Tessa's idea initially. But I supported it. And your mother was happy to live off our handouts. You tried to burn down our barn and knocked Tyler unconscious. I never meant to hurt anybody. You weren't supposed to be home. Doesn't excuse the fact that you didn't even stop to help. What do you want me to say? I panicked. I was terrified that this whole thing was going to blow up in my face. I had to do something. You were here that night. You saw Marianne and Tyler. Why didn't you help? I know it wasn't my best moment, but she threatened my life. So you just decided to let her drown? I didn't decide anything. Everything happened so fast, I panicked. And by the time I got to town, Brown was already on his way out. There was nothing else I could do. there wasn't anything else he could have done that night? I don't know, Ellie. I'd rather not think about it. He's not even the least bit sorry for what he did. He could have seriously hurt you. Yeah, he's just a fucking coward. So what do we do now? We tell him he's gotta fix the mess he made. One way or another. Some fix. You failed us, Tom. You need to make it right. I'll do whatever you want. As long as none of this gets out. Excuse me? <laughs> you want me to pay for my mistakes? Fine. But please, Tessa can't know. This would kill her. Tessa already knows, Tom. How does she not no. know, surely? That's... That's impossible. She must know. It never occurred to you the reason Tessa cut Marianne off was you? Uh, I... But she... She never said anything. She didn't want you to know. Lord. 
Obviously. You should try talking to your wife. Maybe if you had, we wouldn't be in this situation. And maybe Marianne wouldn't be dead. Oh, come on. You of all people should appreciate how troubled Marianne was. She was unhinged. Something like this would have happened sooner or later. And you just couldn't risk being there when it happened. Even though it meant leaving her to raise kids out here all by herself. None of this would have happened if you'd manned the fuck up! I didn't have a choice. Why? I know it shouldn't have happened. But... Well... Your mother was... A very pretty woman. Okay. And she'd been so many places and done so many things. The way I always thought I would have. I got caught up. Love made me a fool. Look, I made mistakes. But this will not go any further than the three of us. Why? We know. Tessa knows. Marianne's dead. There's no point in hiding it anymore. He's afraid it'll tank his campaign. Am I wrong? Jesus, Tom. I've kept your secret all these years. I don't want to go spilling it. But I will if I have to. What? Yeah. Your little story about self-defense. I've never told anyone how Mary and Minnie died. That night, I came out here because I was worried about your mother. No! No way! You're a fucking liar! I saw what I saw. Ugh! You're manipulating us just like you manipulated her! Tyler! You're not listening to this, are you? Be smart about this, Allison. Are you sure you want this to get out? You've got way more here to lose than he does. His name will be all but clear, but you... You'll be a killer. 
What will your uncle say? <laughs> uncle and Michael? Hmm? Well, the whole town might turn on you. No. Don't touch her. <clears throat> you know I'm right. Just get out of here, Tom. Tyler and I need to talk alone. Just please. Think twice before making any rash decisions. There are a whole lot of lives at stake here. Leave us the fuck alone. And never come back. Oh. Eddie already knows about it anyway. And Michael wouldn't. Allie, you okay? You didn't let that asshole get to you, did you? Did you? What if he's right? I've been having all these nightmares about that night, and they were a lot like how Tom said. And now, when I try to remember, that's all I can see. He's trying to mess with your head, and you're letting it work. No, it's more than that. Ever since we started digging, I... I haven't been able to shake this feeling like something's off. Something's off because he put this in your head. Don't let him get away with it. He might not be lying. We, we keep getting things mixed up. We remember totally different versions of the past. Those are just details. This isn't that. She was going to kill me. I'm not so sure anymore, Tyler. She had a gun pointed at me. She chased me. She said she was going to kill me. She threatened Tom with those exact same words. With the same gun, on the same pier. The thing you said to Eddie the other day got thrown back at me. Don't you think it's possible that happened here too? Yes, it's possible. Fuck. I I don't know. And we're never going to know the truth, are we? Cuz the second you walk away from something, that's it. Yeah. I guess at this point, you just have to decide what you believe. Me? Yeah. 
You need to start dealing, Allie. And that means coming to terms with whatever version of the past feels the most true to you. No more running. Whatever you choose, you gotta live with it, okay? Make choice. Oh my god, which one? How can I hurt you? See, I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm not gonna hurt you. If we believe Tom's story, then yeah, it means that she's just killed her mother. But if we do. This one. Um, what's that? <sighs> but she knows deep down she was, yeah, she knows she was the one that did it anyway. So, regardless, she's, you know. Let's not do that too many times. Um, oh, Jesus. Uh. Okay, let's go with this one. Let's stick with this one. I'm going to kill you! I'm going to kill you! <laughs> face being separated from our kids again and the only way to make sure that never happened was for all of us to go together I know it in my heart I saved you I saved us I know you did the right thing oh but did I I don't know you want to go back inside yeah, please. Yeah. God, I don't know. Because <laughs> regardless... Keep what I just found downstairs. What do you think? A little aged well. Oh, or yeah. just gone bad. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool glass. Cut glass. Mug. Hmm. Cheers, I guess. I can't believe Tom thought we'd buy that story. That I almost did. Yeah, I still can't believe he and Marianne. What the hell did she see in him? Jesus, yeah. She was probably just really, really lonely after she lost Leo. I could never get that lonely. Listen, with everything that's been going on, it got me thinking about our voice. Like, that maybe we should stop using it. What? I just don't trust it, and I think we'll be better off without it. This morning, 
I kept getting these horrible visions. Of you and Marianne and Eddie. Visions? Like our memories? Yeah, but, but different. It was all my worst thoughts brought to life. You were in my bedroom saying I abandoned you. Eddie called me a snake. I'm sorry. I should have been there for you. It's okay. I was the one who walked out. I just... I can't let that happen again. I, I don't think it will. Something's been pushing us to find answers. And now we have them. Maybe I'm wrong. And if it stays bad, we can stop. But... I really want to keep what makes us... us. The Mad Hunter was forced to remain below the lake with the Moon Hag, but she did not kill him, because even reduced to just one hand, he was too useful a servant. Lo, he plotted the day think? he would emerge Brothers and sisters. to once again hunt the wise princess and earn back his left hand. Always. And that is the story of how the crafty goblins rescued the wise princess from the Mad Hunter. Whoa. <laughs> nice like that. <sighs> One last look. I'm good to go. Hey, it's me. Hey, me. <laughs> House is empty. I'm getting ready to head out. So, last chance. Is there anything you want me to do while I'm in town? Listen, Ty, you're dropping off the keys with Tina, right? Yep, gonna leave them at her office on my way to the ferry. Well, that's it then. How's Juno? Big and full of people, even without tourists. Michael's been writing up rules for the apartment. I need your support against his whole food policy. Just refuse to sign anything until I get there, <laughs> okay? Okay, but you better hurry. If he gets his way, we'll only have one small shelf for junk food. What? Oh, really? Heresy. I'm gonna need, like, twice that just for snack cakes after my surgery next month. I know, right? This cannot stand. How are you? Good, actually. Really good. You? Same. You know... Emptying the house really cleared my head out. Thanks for doing that. The observatory really needed me this week. And after everything that happened, I, I just felt like I needed to keep some miles between me and Delos Crossing. No worries. You still loving your therapist? Gail, yes. I was actually just doing some letter writing she assigned me as homework. It really helped me get some perspective. 
That sounds awesome. Uh, did you see the article I sent you about Tom losing the election? Ah, uh, cool. yes. I saw your message right before derby practice, so I didn't have time to read it. But I did cackle at the headline. <laughs> did you picture Tom's face whenever you went in for a block? <laughs> no, but that is a great idea. <laughs> Anyways, I'm glad Tessa finally left his ass. Karma is a bitch. But not okay, Tessa. I'm gonna hang up now. See you tonight. Okay. I'm gonna take one last walk through the house and then head to the ferry. Drive safe. Uh, pretty sure that's the only way possible in the old Allison mobile. Love you, Tyler. Mm -hmm. Love you. <sighs> nice look. Gonna miss this. Hell yeah. One more jog down memory lane, Mr. Ronan? Hey, I'm having a private moment with me, myself, and I here. <laughs> okay, <laughs> carry on. Yep. Wow. What a place to leave behind. What do we got? Seeing it empty is so weird. But at least it's the last time we'll ever have to. Mm hmm. There's the raccoon. Hmm. Up top. Michael, must be a relief to finally be done with that place. No doubt. If traffic's not bad, I should be back at our place around four. <laughs> traffic in Delos. Only if the mailbox bandit escaped. Hey, I'm making that biscuit thing you like. Damn. On my way. I'll probably take out some fire hydrants and stop signs. <laughs> Don't die. <laughs> I'll keep it warm. The end of you. Okay. All right, we got the laptop. Uh, we're not letting those. That's back outside. Oh. No, nope, I want to read it. Please, wait, what's that? It's a nice picture. Okay, back over here. Dear Alison and Tyler, I'm not sure where I'm supposed to send this, so I hope it will reach you. I heard from heard from Laura that you finally sold the house. I'm guessing you'll both be on your way out soon. I'm staying in a little cabin on the Tanaki River that the owner's letting me stay in by help fix his boat. It's been nice to start over, but my sponsor at AA says it's important I don't completely ease, er, completely erase the past. Something about being a part of my history. You two have been an important part of everything and so I hope you won't mind me writing this letter, even though words and me sometimes get twisted up. You both have your busy lives, but I'd be really great if we could meet sometimes. Step nine of recovery is about making amends. So I hope that with everything that happened, you guys might let old Sam apologize for all the hurt I did. I could drive to Juno or you could even come visit Tinaki. Got a nice pull out, but you'll have to f fight for the blanket. <laughs> Just kidding. There's two. One of them seems kind of smelly though. <laughs> okay. Please take care of yourself, Sam. Yes. Got adopted by a stray mutt that hung 
around the docks. I named her Skipper. Oh, that's cool. Got a little doggo. Taking those pickies. Cheers. What's through here? Okay, that goes upstairs. You might go upstairs. Sure, there's nothing in here. Okay. You know. Anything in Marianne's room? Another note and bag there. Uh, let's go upstairs. There might be something up there. Oh, nothing there. Uh, we can lean again. Yeah, let's lean again. Certainly hope the new owners are Mr. or Mrs. Fixit. The paper airplane now. Goodbye room. Goodbye room. Goodbye man on the moon? Sure. For posterity. Almost time to go. Huh. Well, at least she finally dumped his ass. Dearest Tyler and Allison, I'm writing this letter from Juno International Airport. Well, I'll soon board a plane to Manila on a missionary assignment. I apologize for not coming in person to say goodbye but I was called cool to make this decision alone and to carry it out on my own well, own as well. I'm sure you understand that sometimes we must follow without question, without question the prompting of the spirit. I will not be coming back to Dallas Crossing for some time. Before I go, there is still something I feel I must confess to you both. Perhaps because I have never found the strength to confront my husband. I have never been able to forgive Marianne for her betrayal. I truly did love you both, like my own children, but I always tried to forgive your mother for her unapologetic lifestyle. But when I discovered that you were the fruit of her affair with my Thomas, I wanted her to suffer like I was suffering. And I brought down on your house the wrath I never dared allow to unfold in mine. I've been deeply ashamed all these years, and I'm surprised how much better I feel if they're out in the open. The greatest thing about the, about truth is the peace it brings to your life. I hope you can find it in your hearts to forgive me. You have taught me once again how love will bring your far, you further in life. Something that Marianne had been trying to show me all along. Take care of each other, always. In his steps. Yes, mm, yeah. Sucks to suck, Thomas Anthony Fecky. Veni Vedi Losti. <laughs> Thomas Fecky loses mayoral election against current mayor Leslie Scow. 
Leslie Scow declared victory in her bid for re-election over controversial challenger Thomas Fetchy. For almost 68% of the vote. Is that it? Scow's triumph was the widest margin of victory in Dallas Crossing history. Her rival, Locust business owner Vecchi, sparked much debate in the community over his gun control policies. But Scow's success has been mainly attributed to her willingness to reach across party lines. Many in, many in the community say her re-election came as no surprise. According to sources close to the city council, Scow invited Vecchi to join her mayoral cabinet, but Vecchi refused. Vecchi declined to comment on the election results, except to say that he plans to focus on his family and other business pursuits. Some in the community were baffled by his comments, given the recent shutter, shuttering of Vecchi's business, the highly popular Tessa's Cafe managed by his wife Tessa Vecchi. In a separate statement, Mrs. Vecchi announced she was ending her thriving business to focus on personal and spiritual matters. Okay. Leave the house for okay, this. Um, yeah. I should have probably run these by his place. Or just dropped them off at Bernie's. Still a few other things. It's too bad Tessa closed her cafe. That other place just doesn't quite hit the spot. Yeah. There's a few other things that we can look at. I hope the next goblin family bakes a lot of sand pies in this. I hope you didn't eat those sand pies. Hey there, little buddies. You keep an eye on this place for us, okay? Hey. Ooh. Okay, that's that might be everything. Um, that shut. Yeah, I don't think we can go in there. Uh, do we check out the? Do we check out down here? Actually, yeah, everything really is. Hmm. That's good to hear. Wow, how far can we go? <laughs> Are we go in the water? We can't go in the water. Oh. It's skim stone. Skim skim stones. <laughs> oh, that was pretty good actually. Right, not too shabby. Not there any more? No beavers. <laughs> no. Well, I'm right behind you guys. I didn't realize I'd come all the way down here. I don't know if you could earlier, but you might have done. Okay. Anything on? On the dock. Yeah. Time to move on. Okay, yeah. Yep. Anything... Can we get around to that bit? Nope. Not allowed around there. What about through this? Through here. No. Okay, I think that is it. That is the last 
spies. And yeah. Bada bing, bada boom. Shake the room. Well, this is goodbye for real, I guess. Hey, Aaron. It's Ty. Tyler Ronan. I, uh, thought I'd catch you on your break between sessions, but I guess you're going long with another rebel with too many causes. <laughs> I, I know I haven't reached out since I left Fireweed, but I just wanted to say, well, you were right about grief, about it going in circles. This morning, I was out on the porch staring at the fog, and my mother, she, she just tumbled right out of me. But it was okay. It actually felt good to remember. Anyway, uh, give me a call back if you get a chance. I'll see you around. And thank you. found out the truth, well, did we find out the truth? We don't know. I mean, we found out who their father was. It was Tom. I had no idea. <laughs> he was I, the person I least suspected. I fought Sam, but then we obviously found out it wasn't him. Um knew it wasn't going to be Eddie. Um, it's definitely not Michael. <laughs> I mean, I guess that Tom was the only person that we knew about that it could have been. But I thought it was just going to be some random person, I guess. Hmm. I mean, I chose... I mean, the choices were to go with Tom's memory or stick with Tyler's it didn't really like regardless which tr which memory you chose you know she she killed their mother regardless so I just thought it would be more You know, for brother sis, brother sister sake, to be like, you know, she was there for. I mean, she was there for him. So, you know, and to keep that brother and sister sort of connection, really, rather than to believe their dad who just didn't love them at all. So. And it, yeah, it was nice to know that he lost his, um, he lost his, uh, election, whatever it was. It's only 68%, I thought it would, you know, maybe in the 70s. 
but hey ho, he still lost. <laughs> he lost his wife as well. So, and everyone seemed happier that the the truth was was out. Really, it felt like knowing that people could move on because everyone had their own story, their own secrets that they kept and knowing that you know, they don't have to worry about that anymore they could just move on I guess yeah, they can move on but they, they will never forget it they can move on knowing that I don't know, like the whole they've dug up everything they can, they found out as much as they can about what happened and they you know, they pretty much know everything so that sort of story is sort of like I say, not forgotten, but just like the story has ended they've got closure yeah all round like, all round I really yeah I really enjoyed this because I genuinely didn't know who the who their father could be even though when you think about it and narrow it down it's obvious Let's see. Let's see the last bits. Alison was grateful they completed Marianne's puzzle. 29% forced the chest open. 71% completed it. Okay. Alison felt that standing by the twins' memory was the right thing. Oh, wow. 54% believed that Tom's... Believed in Tom's testimony. And 46 sticked with the twins. Okay. That's interesting. The twins trusted their bond and kept their voice. 7% let their voice go. Okay. Eddie was relieved that Alison accepted responsibility in the murder. Sam lost his temper on Alison. Michael felt closer to Tyler, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. And yeah, this is... I mean, it's US. I guess they got an international one there, but yeah. But yeah, if you need anything like that then don't be afraid to reach out um if you're having trouble honestly that was tell me why and yeah that was it <laughs> i hope i hope you enjoyed this um because i certainly did so yeah well, until next time, bye-bye.